Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spearn, I've left you in the dark, and welcome to Age of Engineering Super Shorts. When I made episode 1, I had already finished 5 ages. I had just entered the 5th age, and I didn't feel like restarting the pack. I still don't, so instead, I'll catch you up on everything I did, starting with the Stone Age. The very first thing I did was make a mining portal, using the mining multi-tool and portal frames. Before I started mining, I used the mod just enough resources to figure out the best places to get ores. I'll post the list I made in the description. Then I made a smeltery, which had the same recipe. I needed a clay bucket to transport lava, and a clay cast to make an iron pick, and with the iron pick, I could mine bauxite, which let me get aluminum, and from aluminum, aluminium brass. Yes, I'm inconsistent. Then I started working on a coke oven, which requires lava wood, which I automated with transfer nodes, which require hoppers, and an extra utilities redstone clock. After all, the goal of the pack is to automate everything, even batch crafting. So I made the coke oven and placed it here, though it's gone now. With creosote oil, I could make treated sticks. And with that, a forge hammer. Before I proceeded, however, I decided to make my first 9x9 of many. This is when I decided on my main build theme. Dented chisel blocks for the floor, black Celtic for the wall outlines, tunion for the doors and roof, actually additions lamps for lighting, stable stones for outline and decoration, especially the outline of the house, and enlightened clear glass for the windows. Since it was to be an IC2 building, I used a white floor with white wall accents. But then I made my first IC2 machines, a generator, a bat box, a compressor, and a metal former. Then I made a blast furnace and automated it with transfer nodes and hopper ducts. I had a filter transfer node pulling out universal fluid cells. I still have it set up. And when the compressor compressed the universal fluid cells into compressed air cells, I pulled them out into the blast furnace using hopper ducts. While I waited five hours at that, I made overclocker upgrades, went to the nether, made a tool forge which requires quite a bit of steel, and mined a lot. When I got back, I jumped into the calculator age by making a survivalist generator which requires steel, a power cube which was a bit more complicated, and a calculator which I charged in the power cube. When I had finished 56 steel with the IC2 blast furnace, I had 56 slag which let me make an immersive engineering blast furnace, which was much faster. I put it right here. For the calculator, I could now make a peat-fired engine. I needed stable glass. So I made a smallish bog earth farm for peat. Meanwhile, I made my next building. Knowing the calculator had white and black accents, I used black lamps and white accents. Redstone ingot blocks from calculator helped too. The outline is red here too. I crafted the coal generator and atomic reconstructor. Note, iron casings require advanced machine casings. And I temporarily put them right here. This allowed me to start generating power with immersive engineering including with water wheels. So I went to build an immersive engineering base inside of a mountain. Use environmental tech basalt instead of chisel, with rather erratically placed black lamps from actually additions, treated fences and treated scaffolding from immersive engineering, and chisel factory blocks. I first made three water wheels. Then I made an ore processing system with a crusher, conveyors, and the item router from immersive engineering, and external heaters, which speed up furnaces. Afterwards, I set up a reinforced blast furnace and coke oven system. To get into age 3, I needed an empowerer. But first, I needed a calculator coal dust, which comes from prunai seeds, which can only be grown in a calculator basic greenhouse. I built it roughly over here and powered it with a peat engine at the bottom. Meanwhile, I made my third room for extra utilities 2 and actually additions. I used dented prismarine for the floor, anesthetic green blocks as corners, and red lamps and redstone blocks as decoration, along with green stable stone types. Then I set up my empowerer. To power it, I set up three water wheels above my base. Then I made an actually additions farmer for canola. Then I made this once 9x9 with purper, sea lanterns, and laboratory blocks. My canola system was missing a crucial component, a liquid monitor from RF tools. So I had to do the monitoring myself. A fluid placer constantly places oil. The scanner detects if it's oil, and an inventory scanner from Super Circuit Maker detects if there's crystallized canola seeds in the precision dropper. The scanner has a knot gate leading into an ender pulsar, so when there was oil, the pulsar would tick repeatedly and set off this AND gate, which would drop the seeds, and after a short delay, which would drop the seeds, and after a short delay, run the fluid collector. Next up, I set up a calculator circuit extraction system. I use extraction chambers on cobblestone into reassembly chambers, into an assembly chamber into a storage crate, and eventually into a storage drawer system. To get the drawer controller, I needed a basic circuit board, which needed a carpenter and those very circuits I had been making. Now that I had sturdy casings, I wanted to do bees. For that, I needed self-sustaining plant power, and the diesel gen wasn't available to me yet. 
So I went to the mining world and made a forestry multi-farm with a fermenter and a squeezer. I needed water, so I made the extra utilities mining upgrade, which required grid power. So I made a resonator and a bunch of water mills. This is my water mill setup. That done, I made a greenhouse with hardened clay and both types of sandstone. This was around Easter, so I got to isolate a leprain strain and give it lots of good traits, which I'm still doing. I can breed these into other bees without worrying about mutation, because the leprain bee doesn't have any mutations. Now that I had a proper seed set up, I could get seed oil and get into Ender.io. I actually made 16 machine chassis. So I built a grey building with purple accents, another type of Tyrion, and Ender.io decoration blocks. Just after I made my first alloy smelter, I began production of my first episode. And that's pretty much it! I do have trophies corresponding to each room, including the sturdy casing, and Ender.io and RF tools. And that's it for today's episode! Sorry it took so long, I was trying to deal with the pops caused by my other microphone, but I only created problem after problem. I still haven't decided what I'm going to do next episode, so if you have any tips or feedback, I'd love to hear them, as always. I hope you enjoyed!